cleaned in the house. So let's go ahead and get some, huh? Put you down on the ground. Well, I get down on the ground. Try to get you on stable ground. The wind is blowing, guys. It's blowing. So we have mustards. They're growing. They last throughout the winter. Let me not be so rough with them. They last throughout the winter. Here I am. Going back and forth. Should have brought a knife. some more if this thing will stand up stand up so I'll turn you down so you can see a little bit you don't need to look at me just look at the greens I'm here look at these snails these snails are taking over I know I'm rustic. Let's go. Ooh. Yeah, I think that's enough. Y'all think that's enough? Uh-oh, I'm dropping some. No, drop it. It was too hard to keep it together all this time. <laughs> oh, I got a whole bunch of them. Let me not put them too close because it's probably a snail or sure enough, look at that. You don't see them? I see. They won't fall off. I see snails. All over the place, baby ones. Here's one that went right there. Let me see, let me pick through these. See these? Yeah, it's a snail. It's in a shell. I'm not gonna kill him, I just don't want him around my food. Let me look at these before I bring them in the house. Maybe they're on the bottom side. That's what's making all these holes in here. They're eating my stuff before I get to it. I'm squatting down. Let me pull y'all down a little bit. So I'm just going through. I'm just going through. And making sure there's no snails on it. No sense of bringing them in the house. There's another one. See? See that? Right there. Right there. Snail. Somebody can tell me how to get rid of these bad boys. Please help me. Here's another one. I need to start killing them instead of just putting them down. It's infested with snails. All right, I'm going to take these in the house and wash. Take them in the house and I'm going to wash them. Oh, it's been a long day. I'm going to drop in it. Lord Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> we got it together. Here it is. <laughs> I'm going to go back in the house and I'll see y'all in a second. Because my greens had snails all over it, I don't feel comfortable just washing it off with water. So I'm going to do a little extra today. I'm going to fill my bowl with water. And we're going to get some baking soda. And I'll put about two tablespoons of baking soda in there. And then I'll wash, let my greens soak in that. So I'm going to fill this thing up. I'm going to put two tablespoons. And it's not, I'm not measuring. I'm just taking a tablespoon. Getting another one. Putting it in there. 
I need my greens to soak in this because I don't know. I don't know what those things have. What they came across or slid across. <laughs> so I'm going to take my greens and there's another snail. Lord. Here it is. See? Another one. I'm going to put them in the trash. Mm, here we go. Take my greens and I'm going to submerge them in this baking soda water. Get some of that bacteria off. I'm going to put one more tablespoon for good measure. I'm going to let them soak in there for a while. And baking soda um, is kind of cl like chlorine. Um, you could use it in your pools and your to help out the pool, um, to sanitize the pool. So I'm gonna let my green sit in there for a second and then I'm gonna get a plate and I'll put it on the side. So let me put this up. And I'm gonna get a pot. Move my dish rack aside. I'm gonna get a pot. And I'm gonna pick these things apart. Look at look at what they did. I mean, they were devastating it, you know. I don't like using insecticides, but I may have to. So I'm gonna pick them apart. I'm gonna put them in this pot and then I'm gonna rinse the whole pot off. This one. I like picking them apart because I get a better view of what's going on with them just in case I, you know, I missed a snail or something or some, you know, another insect. I'd rather do it this way and see what's going on than to take a knife to it and um, cut it up. In the store, I mean, if you buy it in the store, you know that there's pesticides, unless you get it organic, there's pesticides on those greens. So you're not going to see, you know, the damage that I see. You're not going to see the damage that you would see on an organic crop. I don't know which is better. I mean, the pesticides or, you know, maybe bacteria. But washing it like this should kill most of it. And then cooking it will kill, kill, kill the rest. So I'm just, I'm just thankful that I have this. Thankful that it survives and that it keeps producing. Um... And I'm just going to keep on trying, keep on planting. And I'll just have to fight off the bugs naturally the best way I can. Without putting down any seven, seven dust or any of that stuff. That doesn't, I don't know about that stuff. I'm a skeptic. I'm putting down stuff to kill insects that, you know, they live there naturally. And that means, you know. You're doing something right because insects don't go with the synthetic stuff. They don't even mess with it. They got certain plants they don't touch. So I'm washing this stuff off. I'm washing them off as I go. So I pick them apart. Rubbing this, the leaf underwater. See that? So I'm taking it and I'm rubbing it off. Trying to get as much grime off of the leaf as possible. that in there. <clears throat> rubbing my fingers like this. See my fingers? I'm rubbing them like that underwater. Trying to get off any, any residue, anything that I, shouldn't be there is coming off in the water. Now, you know I'm going to put pork in this, right? 
don't know y'all y'all might want to be extra healthy and if you do i mean you don't have to put the pork in there um i finally realized what kind of bacon i've been making they call it buckboard bacon tastes like bacon to me just regular bacon to me but that's what i'm gonna use instead of a ham hock or a turkey neck or a turkey turkey um leg because buckboard bacon is way cheaper and i have it in the house try not to go to the grocery store as much as possible try to get what i want i mean i have to go if i need something some vegetable that i haven't grown that isn't growing at, at the time that i need it um, but i try not to go to the grocery store because you find yourself i mean buying stuff that you don't need well i do there was a time in my life where I hated going to the grocery store. Not that changed. It became a habit and I was buying up all this stuff and I was like, oh my gosh. Then you have to cook it before it goes bad. So, anyway. And I don't like throwing away food. Never did. Never liked throwing away food. Here's my greens. Take it, wash it, rub my fingers on it, rub it out. I like picking stuff fresh too because it tastes different. When it sits in the store, you don't know how long the thing has been out of the ground. And what they sprayed on it to keep it green. I mean, I have actually stood, I was picking up a piece of like, celery or something and that sprayer came on in the store i'm like what the heck what is that i felt uh, defiled <laughs> assaulted <laughs> by their sprinkler system that they have in the vegetable department so i'm washing it off keep on Pulling it off, throw the stem in the sink. One time I remember buying some uh, collard greens and they were rotten. I mean, they were falling apart. I was doing the same thing I'm doing now and they were just, they were not fresh. They were not. And I was like, man, I gotta be more careful when I'm picking stuff up out of the store because sometimes the um, guys who do the produce, they, some of them, some of them are, get lazy and they put just put new stuff on top of the old stuff. And then the, when you know when people buy, the old stuff is on the bottom, and unbeknownst to you, that thing's been sitting there two weeks or more because everybody bought the new stuff that was on top. So here we go. Yeah, wash this off with my hand. So I know this is fresh because I just picked it out of the garden. Yep. I need to put some collards in the ground too. And I'll plant those later on today and tomorrow. I put two, I put some asparagus and what is that? I planted two planters full of stuff. Some uh, asparagus, some um, butternut squash. I forget what the other one is, just in that planter. Hopefully they come up. Sometimes the seeds, I mean, if you, the longer you keep your seeds, the you know the, the lower the germination rate is going to be. Because I have some seeds from last year, and they're not doing too well. So, I just make sure I buy seeds, and I buy the seeds that I'm going to plant that year. Okay, I'm down to the last, the nitty gritty. Look at my water. Look how dirty that is. Glad I did that. Glad I did it with the um with the baking soda. So now I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna wash them off again. Might wash them like two more times in cold water, not hot water, cold. Wash them off. Not wash them. I already washed them. They feel different now that I washed them in the baking soda. Pour it off. I'm eating something. I'm 
more water. And this is just enough for two, maybe three people. It's not a lot. Pour it off. And this time I'm just gonna fill it up. Partially, like halfway. And we're gonna go over to the stove. We're gonna season this thing up, all right? <laughs> I got my buck board bacon. Buck board bacon. Say that 10 times. And you see, I, I've cut these myself, so that's why they're so thick. I'm just gonna take that. I'm gonna chop that up. Put it in there. I don't have the fire on yet, so. I'm just getting everything in there. I'm only gonna use one piece. And I got an onion. Take that. I'm gonna tic tac to it. Tic tac. Uh, I guess I ran out of words. Toe. See? Tic tac toe. Tic tac toe. All right. Take that and cut it up. Cut it up, cut it up, cut it up. Not gonna use the whole onion. That's enough onion for that. And I got some garlic powder. I put about a tablespoon in there. Got some onion powder. You don't have to put as much onion powder in there. And I like hot pepper. So you don't have to do this, but I think pepper makes everything taste better. Just a personal opinion. You know what I want to do? I want to put some Cajun seasoning in there instead of Laurie's. I was going to put Laurie's, but I think I want to get some Slap Your Mama. Slap Your Mama. I got to do a Cajun dish because Slap Your Mama, I mean, I love this stuff. This is like my, my go-to, my number one. It's Creole cake too, but I can't, that's harder to get. Slap your mama is at the stores here. So I put about a tablespoon and a half in there. And let me get all this up. So I got all my seasoning in. It already smells good. It's not even cooking. I'm going to put a lid on there. And I'm going to put it on about five. Let this thing heat up and cook. And I'll be right back with you because this is it. This is it. You're just going to let it steam cook and um, all of that stuff. I mean, I could have mixed it up. All right, I could mix it up. Let me take my knife. I don't feel like getting a spoon. Take my knife and get all that stuff in there, incorporated in there. I'll do a taste test, but I'm pretty sure that's enough season. I don't want to put too much salt um, in there. The slap your mama has salt in it. And the bacon, the buckboard bacon has salt in it. So buyer beware. That'll make it really salty if, you, if you're not careful. So I'm going to let this simmer. What you have to do is watch it. I'm not going to put a timer up. Maybe I should. I'll put a 30-minute timer on there. And I'll be back with you in 30 minutes, okay? <laughs> the alarm is going off. Turn that off and let's check on our greens. It smells good, but I know they're not cooked. I could tell by the way I'm moving them around in this pot. So, let me taste the water because that'll tell me, get out boy, that'll tell me if, um, if I got enough seasoning in here. Mm. 
it could use some more salt. <laughs> I didn't think it would, but it does. I'm gonna use some more slap my mama or slap your mama. Put that in there. I'm gonna taste it again. Need a spoon. That's better. Mustard greens are strong. So if you don't like a strong flavor green, go ahead and get some kale. Okay? They're kind of like collards. They got their own distinct, like their own distinct flavor. So if you don't like strong greens, don't do mustard greens. I like them though. Kale is my favorite, but this will do. Kale, turnip, let me see. Kale, turnip, what's next? Spinach, I don't know if that really counts, spinach. Um, then mustards, and last the collards. They used to have to us beat us <laughs> give us a whipping to eat our collards when we were kids i never did like them well i uh, know i take that back there was a guy that i met in korea who could cook collards like nobody else and that was the only collards that i ever liked i'm gonna put some salt in there i was trying to um not to do it but um it needs it it needs salt So that's about a half a teaspoon right there. Take that and mix it in. Get another spoon. Taste test it. That's better. Take these three spoons. I never reuse my spoons in the um, in the pot. Cover it. I'm gonna let it cook another mm, 20 minutes. I'll see you then. So they've been going another two, 30, I mean another 20 minutes. And I'm gonna do a check. Yeah, they look done now and they feel done. See how they're light green? They're lighter green now, and they're really flimsy, or really, I don't know, wilted? That's cooked. So I'm gonna turn this off. I have uh, the pot roast that I made, the Asian-inspired pot roast that I made warming up, some rice and peas, I have my greens, and I will see you when I plate. The greens are off, okay? I'm gonna take them off the burner. See you in a sec. And there you have it. There's my mustards. That's the rice and peas that you can find on my channel. The Asian inspired roast beef or pot roast that you can find on my channel. And that's just tomatoes and um, avocado with a little bit of onion on it. And this is the hard boiled bread. Anyway, I'm getting ready to eat dinner. I hope you all have a wonderful night. And remember to take care of yourself and take care of each other. Bye.